Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Do you remember your first email? Everything began like a blessing. In the 90s, emails became the silver bullet of our communication. They boosted our efficiency. They even broke down all frontiers of time difference and geographical distance. The first email reached Germany in my hometown, in Karlsruhe, and it was in the year 1984. I was innocent, hopeful, and still analog then. High-speed communication has not left any marks or wrinkles on my face yet. Today, billions of emails later, things look quite different. Even I look quite different. Between the left and the right image, there are 30 years, of which I have spent two and a half surfing and one and a half emailing like crazy. I'm 38 today, but I lived only 34 years in real life. How could that happen? I built up two new media agencies and one online publishing house right from the scratch. So I was only able managing this huge challenges because I conditioned myself to work 24-7. I was online all the time, and I thought of it like of a competitive advantage. When one day I figured out that I was really ruining my productivity and investing all my creativity in too much meanless online communication, I started to rethink the so-called blessing of email. The following seven evil facts help to form better self-awareness. I've once had a great colleague. He had only one weakness. He was so addicted to his Blackberry that I started calling his cell phone Crackberry. Once he was on the playground with his little son, and he was swinging him with the right hand and with the other hand, you might guess, he was checking emails on his Crackberry. There was one email that upset him so much that he pushed the little boy way too hard. The boy fell down, and then he said this sentence. Daddy, your cell phone hurts. Thank you for not laughing. <laughs> Now you're prepared for fact number one. We pay more attention to our cell phones than to our kids. Isn't that weird? And we spend more time emailing than thinking. By the way, do you guess you get paid for emailing or for thinking? Evil fact number three. We are constantly distracted, distracted 24-7, and take our loss of control for career. But it's a proven fact that emails make you stupid. A study at the British King's College proved that a test group under the influence of marijuana solved problems better, better and faster than people who were distracted by email. <laughs> email multitasking made the measured IQ score, uh, IQ score decrease by 10%. The pothead group lost only 5%. So think about it. <laughs> fact number five, a personal, a very important fact is that emails make you sick. Information overload and constant distraction 
lead to pathological loss of concentration. There's even a name for it. It's called attention deficit trait. Harvard physician Edward Hollowell is the godfather of the disease name, and he estimates that more than 50% of all managers suffer from attention deficit trait. One well-known German example, one prominent example, is communication professor Miriam Meckel. In 2007, she has written the bestseller The Joy of Being in Unaccessible, How to Avoid the Digital Communication Trap. She exactly knew what not to do. But three years later, in 2010, she published another book, and even her burnout diary became a bestseller. So I think that says a lot about the state of our society and the state of our over-communicated minds. Emails cause labor interrupters. Scientists at the University of California figured out that knowledge workers get interrupted every 11 minutes every 11 minutes. Interruption factor number one, emails. And now, ask yourself, what happens to your creativity, to your productivity, and to your concentration when being distracted becomes your daily work condition? Emails ruin not only your health, or your concentration, they might ruin your company. Every employee in your management who is distracted by only one hour of unnecessary emailing per day costs your company at least 25,000 euros a year. Think of 50 managers and smell the smoke of 1.25 million euro burning. Key question is, are you in control of your emails or are they controlling you? Don't worry, here comes first aid that works. First of all, you have to reinvent this sentence. Emails does not longer work as an ego booster. Instead of, I'm male, therefore I am, except I'm male, therefore I am a slave. If you rule, you rule your time. A real master is not available 24-7. Always available are just slaves. Start your day offline. This is the most powerful rule. If you take this to heart and build up a routine, I promise you, you will regain lots of productivity, creativity and energy back. The first hour of your day should belong to your planning. Define the 20% of priorities that promise to bring you 80% of results. And do not cheat. Do not check mails whilst lying in bed. Do not Facebook on the toilet. If you start your day opening you up your email box, game is over. Why is that? Because emails make you work. They never do your work. Rule number three, a simple one. Shut the mail up. Shut the mail up. Disable all optical and acoustic alerts. Stop automatic email downloading. And turn off your phone if you're not available. And again, don't cheat. Silent does not mean vibracall. Vibracall is not silent. Rule number four, three times a day, keep the doctor away. That works with email, try it out. Define three specific email opening times for you and your team. And be strict. Close your mailbox outside your email opening time and give it and give you 
some rest. Rule number five, a biblical one. Those who sow males, they will harvest. This rule is so simple, you won't suffer from any withdrawal syndromes. Send 30% less emails, then you receive 30% less emails. It's that easy, try it out. Number six, an emotional rule. Do the WIMP test. Before sending an email, ask yourself, would I like to receive what I'm going to send? Hmm? Let's face it. Do you like to-do lists on weekends? Anybody likes to-do lists on weekends? Do you like to be criticized with all your team in copy? Do you like to read and discuss love issues on endless emails? No? Great. Then do not longer bother and pressure other people with these emails of this emails uh, of this needless and evil kind. Last but not least, launch your mail sheet radar. If someone sends you a needless email, reply with the following subject line. <laughs> what now? Stop reacting. Start acting again. Believe me, a year from now, you will wish you had started today. I know that's easier said than done. But please, start today. Fight email and constant online distraction. Start being more present in real life. There are so many people out there who love to be with you and who love to share real-life moments with you. And don't be afraid. If the world goes down, you won't be notified by email. Remember, there's nothing more to miss but the most beautiful thing in the world. Your life. To leave you more or with more than just a talk, I've pre-published 77 pages of my upcoming self-help book today. Find the download link in the goodie bag. And now, stay hungry and stay foolish. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>